You're listening to episode number 27 of the Play Your Position podcast. Welcome to the Play Your Position podcast, where your story matters and we make it count. Here's your host, Mary Lou Kaser. Let's get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another week of the Play Your Position podcast, where we feature people who have achieved mastery but more importantly, love to share their personal story. I'm super excited to introduce to you my guest today, Mary Catherine Johnson. Mary Catherine, are you ready for kickoff? I'm ready, positioned and ready. Awesome. So Mary Catherine is an author, entrepreneur, and mom to two boys, two Aussies, and a cat. She hosts the twice-weekly podcast, Parentpreneur Power, and lives in the beautiful state of California. Mary Catherine, welcome to the show. I, like I said, I'm super excited to have this conversation with you today because you exemplify the modern day success story because you're taking advantage of some of these amazing platforms that we now have available to us, like podcasting. That's actually how we met. And I would love for you to share more about how you came to play the position that you're playing right now. How is it guiding and shaping your life and anything else you'd like to add about that position? Well, Mary Lou, thank you so much for inviting me to your home, your podcast home. I'm very, very happy to be here uh, chatting with you because I think what you're doing is really amazing and so needed, I think, in the podcasting world. So kudos to you. Let's see. First, Parent entrepreneur power. I Being a parent entrepreneur really means you are a mom to both your kids and your business because really building a business to me is just like having another child. And my first business child, so to speak, was uh, my first business. I started in 2003 and it was called, and it still is, uh, Running Strong, uh, Mommy Loves. And That is a a whole huge story that I don't need to go into all the details, but basically I started the first novelty maternity business online, the first company selling novelty maternity wear. And I could not believe that that space was not filled when I had this um, lightning stroke of an idea, you know, that idea that just kind of totally takes you over and will not let go that you eat and breathe and sleep thinking about it, dreaming about it. I had never experienced that before. And when I did with Mommy Loves, I just had no choice but to follow it. And so that's pretty much where it started um, now 11 years ago. And I have not looked back since. And Mommy Loves basically started because I had difficulties getting pregnant the first time. It took us a year to get pregnant. I was 35 and we had our first miscarriage. It took us another year to get pregnant and I had another miscarriage almost to the day. And then I was finally pregnant with my first son uh, two months later. And I felt like it was the hardest college course I had ever taken in my life. Mm -hmm. And I'd finally passed it. You know, procreation, so many people take advantage, you know, it's just, it's just something that happens. They don't even, you know, really think about it and it happens. And for me, it was so hard. So I thought, you know, I have to, it's like I passed this class finally. And I created an Excel spreadsheet in my Windows 98 computer. Yes, I'm dating myself. (laughs) (laughs) But I did, I created an Excel spreadsheet that basically looked like a report card. And it said pregnancy 101, I finally got an A plus and pregnancy prevention, I finally failed. And I've never been so happy to fail a class in my life. And so I, wow. I made that spreadsheet and I, I went down to Target and bought a blank maternity shirt, brought that printed out spreadsheet to my local mall, a little sports shop and said, can you put this on this shirt? And they said, sure. And half an hour later, I had my shirt with my report card on it and I wore it everywhere. 
And I got so many comments, Mary Lou, I could, you would not even imagine. And I, that idea for a business started growing. And before it could really germinate and uh, take hold, I uh, went into early labor and was in the hospital to stop early labor and, and uh, was off my feet for uh, the next month and a half. And so, you know, it kind of went in dormancy, if you will. And then, of course, you're, you have a newborn and your life goes into uh, total frenzy, you know, when you've never experienced having children before. So my life was consumed with that and working and dad staying home and et cetera, et cetera, until we find ourselves uh, deciding to have our second. And uh, I got pregnant very easily that time. <laughs> the body must have caught on to how it happens. I started thinking about that again and took out that maternity shirt and wore it around and uh, started thinking about a business. And at eight months pregnant with my second son, let's just say uh, fate intervenes and I fell and broke both my legs when I was eight months pregnant. Oh my gosh. So yeah, that idea didn't, didn't germinate any further there either because I was totally consumed with having a cast up to the knee on both legs and uh, not being able to move or go anywhere or do anything without the help of a walker and uh, a bedside commode, <laughs> mm. <laughs> which made for a very, very funny, funny story. But anyway, so, uh, you know, I I delivered the baby. He was totally fine. Uh, my legs finally healed. And uh, that's when I said, if I can do this, if I can survive this, breaking my legs at eight months pregnant, delivering the baby with casts on, you know, all of that with my sense of humor intact, you know, <laughs> I can do anything. And mommy loves that little seed germinated and grew exponentially. And I just have not looked back since. What an incredible story that you just shared. I, I don't think I've ever heard somebody describe their journey quite like that, especially with the whole pregnancy and giving birth element to a business. And you and I have spoken about that idea before for your show, Mary Catherine, in that when we start a business, it really is like having a newborn child and it takes over our lives. Everything suddenly is about that baby. And here you had this incredible concept, this idea, but because of other factors were coming in. I mean, we just jumped ahead and that, that ball was kicked off and man, you were on the field <laughs> running down towards the end zone and, and you were sacked, you fumbled, <laughs> you got intercepted, you, you got shoved out onto the sidelines all almost in one place. Yeah, right. Crazy, you know, and yet here you are 11 years later, not only with a successful business under your belt, but also with a new arm to your business, which is this parent entrepreneur arm. I would love for you to share some details or a story about who has been an instrumental coach or mentor for you on this journey from the very beginnings of Mommy Loves to where you find yourself today. That uh, really has changed quite a bit, um, but there have been some very, very instrumental people on this journey. And you're right, we did talk about the whole parent entrepreneur um, thing on my podcast, and I can't wait for your audience to hear our conversation because it was it was wonderful then, and just a precursor to uh, to this one here. But that really having a a newborn business, the connection between parent in business really didn't happen for me until about, uh, I would say, 2012. And when I first started Mommy Loves, there were so many instrumental people that uh, I have lost touch with now because the this whole idea of online entrepreneurship was was quite new in 2003. You know, it wasn't brand new. There were a lot of bloggers and things going on there, but products on the internet were still uh, still in their infancy. And there were so many people who lent me an, a helping hand and were so generous with their time because I was sourcing a product. I had to find a manufacturer in the United States. I, I was not going to India or China and I had to, to find uh, and source a manufacturer that had low enough minimums that I didn't have to buy 20,000 of each size, which I could not afford sitting in my spare bedroom with an 18 month old and a four year old that I also had to take care of at the time. And so I had to, to navigate all of the product based 
sales uh, and and uh, systems that I had no clue how to do. So there were many others that came before me that helped me. And then I consequently and subsequently helped others come up behind me in the product space. But more recently, say about 2012, there were some instrumental, oh my goodness, online people that I'm sure are very familiar to your audience. Uh, people like Pat Flynn of Smart Passive Income and John Lee Dumas of Entrepreneur on Fire. Those two individuals, I have had the absolute pleasure of interviewing on my podcast and speaking with and building a an online relationship with, with. I have not actually met them yet, but will next year when I attend a, some conferences that I'm sure they will be speaking at. But they have helped me from afar. They have helped me with the tools that they readily make available to all of us um, online. And specifically, I started with Smart Passive Income and how Pat shows people how to to, you know, create an online space and an online brand. And his podcast tutorial, absolutely free. I think it's six or seven steps with videos that he just puts up absolutely for free. I used that to start my podcast and still follow most of the systems that he recommends there. So even though they have not been either John Lee Dumas or Pat Flynn have not been personal mentors of mine, they have been absolutely without them. I would not be sitting here talking to you today and I would not have gotten to the whole parent entrepreneur connection and the, the connection between our newborns all the way to the exit strategy or, you know, kicking the kids out of the house. Those, those things are connected and I would not be there without those two individuals. But even more recently, I've uh, been personally mentored from uh, Jamie Tardy of Eventual Millionaire. She has been, uh, I have, I'm part of her Millionaire Hustlers group. And uh, it's her, her flagship, her brand new program that she offers. And there's a, a few of us in there that she's helping to take to the next level. She has created an amazing tool with Millionaire Hustlers. And I have found some incredible focus and some incredible tools that have helped me now help so many other parent entrepreneurs take their businesses further as well. Well, Mary Catherine, you just spoke so eloquently about the power of working with a coach or coaches, mentors in your case, it's plural, which I also subscribe to. I know there's two schools of thought. Some people say you can only work with one coach or mentor at a time. I disagree. I think it's possible if you have a strategy mapped out for yourself that you can tap into the wisdom and strengths of different coaches. And as a big time football fan, I know for a fact that there is not one player on a football team that does not listen to more than one coach. And I as well have a huge amount of respect for John Lee Dumas having been featured on his show, number 720, which was a real turning point for me. But also I know of Pat Flynn and Smart Passive Income. And he is, like you said, I think the key word there is generous be, to a fault. He gives so much away because he really does truly want people to succeed. And it is possible in this day and age for us, for anyone who has a dream or for anyone who has an idea for something to find people who are legitimate and people who are generous online who will take you by the hand and say, try it. Here's what I did. Here's my process. Here's my system. I'm giving it to you. And then you have to take action. That's the key. You took action. You didn't sit on the sidelines and watch other people play. You said, I'm here. I'm ready. I'm suited up. Put me in coach. And there you are. And here you are. And so you're well on your way to a really exciting 2015. I know you and I have talked again privately about where you're headed. And I can't think of two, three better people than John and Pat and Jamie to lead you into that place. And I would love for you now, Mary Catherine, to speak about what kinds of changes have you witnessed since you've been online since 2003? And really, that is infancy in internet age. I know it's been around since the 90s, but when we look at when things started to really shift, it was in the early 2000s, right after the bubble popped. And you jumped on, you started this business, it's still running today. But what changes have you witnessed in the last few years 
that have either challenged or inspired you in terms of building out your business? What a great question. Mary Lou, it's uh, just like, and I'm sorry, but I always do this because I'm a mom. I have to relate it to my current life. <laughs> so nothing wrong with yes, that. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not as creative as I might pretend to be and go way beyond, but I have to take what I know. And just like our kids, it has grown and morphed and changed and adapted. Um, the internet is an amazing tool. But with that, the number one thing I think I see with instant access, with so much information that is available to us, um, even though we think it saves us time, really, I think it has shown us that time really has become our most precious commodity. Yes. And I am absolutely inspired by that to be even more mindful of my choices, of where to spend that commodity, where to spend my time. Um, so back when I first started Mommy Loves, I could, even though I felt a, a very strong urgency when I discovered that there was no other novelty maternity company out there and actually online yet, and I was just this little mom, and I say just, I'm sorry, I don't want to minimize myself or any other mom, but I was a mom raising kids sitting in my spare room with, you know, with a, a few ideas and a computer. And I thought to myself, I had such a strong urgency that I have to be the first. I just have to do it. I can't just sit here and keep thinking about it. And that, I think, was uh, was a, a benefit to me. I really didn't just sit and mull it over. Um, I had done my research and I had made a business plan and I showed my wonderful tax accountant hubby, <laughs> who's very risk averse, um, exactly how I was going to do this and that, yes, he should buy in and yes, it's going to be great. And of course it's going to be wonderful. And so he did and uh, still reluctantly, but I got that. Yes. And that's all I care about. <laughs> you right. said yes. So you can't go back on it now. Um, but you know, I, I jumped and I just did it. I created the website myself. I, I, there wasn't Facebook, there wasn't Twitter. <laughs> um, so I, I created the website. I got the word out there. I immediately went to number one in Google just because I was the only one with those keywords. Um, mm -hmm. I did hire a marketing person whom I knew personally and because I was a, a technical recruiter prior to that. So I know very, very well the technical bubble that burst because <laughs> I was in the middle of it when it burst. But one of my clients, one of the people that that I tried to find jobs with or jobs for, she was a marketing, very strong marketing person. So she helped me create the marketing plan and uh, figure out how to do Google AdWords and, you know, get myself in there so that I was number one in Google. And uh, that was critical. But since then now, fast forward to here and to the focus of your question, how has that changed? It's obviously changed drastically. We've all, if we've been anywhere in the online space for even the last five years, you will know that it has changed drastically and Google have changed, has changed their al algorithms how many times. And now we have Facebook and they changed their algorithms and we have Twitter and, you know, Instagram and all those things. So again, time has become our most precious commodity. And because of that, focus has become my buzzword, my keyword. And because we can get distracted by all these different things and where should I spend my time and where should I spend my marketing dollars and should I be on Twitter? Should I be on Facebook? Should I be on Instagram? Should I be where? Really find where your audience is and focus on communicating with them there as efficiently and effectively as possible. And you will get the results you're looking for. But it's focus. And like our buddy John Lee Dumas says, focus means follow one course until success. Not, yes. not 10 courses, not um, a little bit here and a little bit there and a little bit here. No, follow one course. And so those two things, focus and the second thing that Jamie Tardy has taught me very well is a master schedule. We all have all these different schedules, right? We have a schedule for our kids and on the refrigerator or wherever you have it in your house. And you have a schedule on your phone for yourself. And then your, your significant other, your honey, has their schedule. And you're just trying to check them all. But really, 
master schedule and that master schedule has everything on it from your exercise time to your, you know, kids time of getting your kids ready for school or, you know, dinner time. You don't have to be specific, but you know, you're, you're doing dinner at this time. So it doesn't get interrupted and you schedule it out. So that can help you focus. So those two things, focus on one thing and develop a master schedule. Um, and I think that has helped me use my time wisely and take that precious commodity that is my time and uh, use it to its fullest. Absolutely. Time really is our greatest commodity now. And even though it doesn't exist in terms of we can't see or feel it, it's what really controls so much of what we do every day. And until each of us can sit down and really master the time that we're allotted in a 24-hour period using a master schedule or some form thereof, we're just really at the mercy of the whim. And we all know that in today's day and age, it is so easy to get sucked down different rabbit holes, so to speak, (laughs) and really lose a lot of that time, which you can never get back. And FOCUS also, that's an acronym that you shared. I love that too, that follow one course until success. And that's what we do when we're headed towards that main goal that in my metaphor in this program, that is scoring a touchdown, Mary Catherine. I think that it is time (laughs) that we take the ball into the end zone. You are in the red zone and there are less than 30 seconds left on the clock. You are down by four points. It's third down and it is now or never. Tell us a story about a time when you overcame this obstacle and ran the ball into the end zone for a touchdown that won the game for you. Oh my goodness. How about something very recently? (laughs) The best stories I can ever even think of are the ones that happened recently. And I can go about six months ago. I started Parent Entrepreneur Power uh, in January. I started interviewing back in uh, actually a year ago in December, or excuse me, um, October of 2013, but officially launched in January of this year. And about six months ago, things were going fine. I wasn't making any money yet from Parent Entrepreneur. It was really informational and the podcast and communicating and um, putting out content. Uh, Again, just like I learned from Pat Flynn. And just gave as much value as I possibly could. And I knew that if I did that and the audience saw any value in it, then it would come to fruition. And I was totally fine with that. So six months ago, back in about May, the kids got out of school because they get out early and we took a, uh, we had saved up and took an amazing vacation to the East Coast, to New York and Washington, D.C. and Colonial Williamsburg and North Carolina. It was a wonderful vacation, but it cost a pretty penny. So we had budgeted that and and uh, did a great job. Well, right before we left, I had a filling in wonderful, wonderful dental filling that decided to crack and get infected and wonderful stuff. And you don't know me very well, at least in this personally, but I am absolutely afraid, fearful of going to the dentist. I hate, uh, I mean, I'm saying with a passion, hate going to the, I would rather have labor for 10 hours, <laughs> then walk into a dentist's office. The smell immediately hits me. I cannot stand it. So the thought of having to go to the dentist and figure out what was wrong. And when I finally did, he said, you know, you might have to have a root canal. And I'm like, canal, a root? Are you kidding oh, me? <laughs> I mean, you, you know, you're going to have to put me out just to say those words to me. Okay. Because it's just not, uh, yeah. So, you know, we, we were going on this trip. I was going to go fly and I'm in intense pain in my mouth because there's an, a major infection in the roots. And so he says, okay, I'll give you some antibiotics, some painkillers. But when you go up in the air in the plane, it's going to make it worse because the pressure, you know, so he's losing me immediately. Right. I mean, bring right. it. I'm just like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm leaving here now. I don't care what kind of pain I'm in. I'll be fine. So no, he gave me the antibiotics. I went on the plane. I took the, you know, Advil and things. I'm not good with drugs. So I, I just took Advil. I'm not taking Vicodin and all this other kind of stuff. So did all that. But the reason I'm saying this is because we just spent a a huge amount of money on this trip. I come back home and now I've got to spend a huge amount of money because I don't have dental insurance. I'm self-employed. So is my husband. So Mm -hmm. I don't have dental insurance. I have to pay out of pocket. So now I'm going to have to have a root canal and crown which is several thousand dollars. 
and then on top of that, I'm not going to get political, but I'm, I got to tell you that Obamacare basically doubled my health insurance premiums. So now my health insurance premium, and that just happened a couple of months into 2014. So my health insurance premiums are doubled. I don't have dental insurance and I have to pay huge money on my mouth. We just took a major vacation that cost a lot of money. So, and then of course, what always happens, our car died. Mm -hmm. Okay. So have I painted the picture enough that we had to spend a lot of money? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And our savings is depleted and now we're going into debt. And that's just not an option in my family. In our household, going into debt is just not an option for for things like that. So we had a savings for that. But of course, it got depleted with all this stuff. So I did not have an option. I had to make parent entrepreneur power make me money. There was no other option. I had to do it. My back was against the wall. Mm -hmm. And I poured on the coals and really started sourcing my audience and seeing what was available. And within a month... I had my first mentoring client that not just paid for what I was in the, in the, the red, but beyond that and paid for it all and put all my money back in my savings with one client. And immediately after that, I got students for my power parents course. So, you know, your back is against the wall you have to do something. It's no longer just sitting and going, la, 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 I'm having fun. I'm providing value. And I had proof of concept that people needed that value and were willing to step up themselves. And like you just said, take action, not just sit on the sidelines, but they now are poised for their own touchdowns. And oh my gosh, Mary Lou, I had a hand in that. I actually was able to impart... Not just exactly what Pat Flynn says, not just exactly what John Lee Dumas says, but what so many of us need to do, which is bridging the parenting and the entrepreneurship and finding that precious commodity of time while we are also raising these precious little creatures called children. Absolutely. And as a parent myself, my children are teenagers and one is in college, as many listeners are well aware. It doesn't end just because (laughs) they get big. And in in a lot of ways, the roles shift and you have to pivot and adjust just like you do on the field. When your team sees that the defense is going to be doing something different to block your play, you've got to figure it out on the spot. And You also brought up something, Mary Catherine, that cannot be emphasized enough, and that is the only time, this has been my experience, and I know it's been the experience of many others, you just shared yours, and I know lots of other entrepreneurs, and also people who are in careers, it's not until your back is against the wall, and I mean really against the wall, that things are going to change. Otherwise, you're just going to go along, and it's business as usual, until you feel that sense of urgency it is just not going to change. And we fool ourselves and think, I don't care if you're trying to lose weight. I don't care if you're trying to put money back into your savings account or you're trying to take your business to that next level. Unless you feel urgency, unless it is now or never, third down, 30 seconds on the clock, it ain't happening. Mm -hmm. Human beings were just wired for safety and security. And so you either have to artificially create that urgency Or you have to find yourself through circumstances like your story just shared in that situation. And it it is, that is accurate and cannot be disputed. I've seen it too many times. And lived it too many times. (laughs) And lived it, absolutely lived it. And part of the, the challenge is we also are so impatient as human beings. We want things now. And the internet sometimes, again, tricks us into thinking we see the end result of someone's success online in the media, like television, or even listening to an, a book, we're listening to a finished product. That novel may have taken that author 10 years to write. Well, we didn't see the 10 years of pain and anguish. Mm-hmm. We didn't see all that behind the scenes stuff. We just see that finished result. Then what does that do to our mindset? Oh, look how easy it is for them. Wrong. Right. You have to really be able to step back and realize That no one who has succeeded in anything has not been showing up at the practice field day after day, sweating it out, getting hurt, 
messing up, you know, doing all those things that we tend not to show the world. There it is. So speaking of offensive strategies that people can use, obviously you've given us a couple. Could you share a couple more as we bring it into the last segment of the show here, Mary Catherine? What are a couple of key offensive strategies straight out of your playbook that listeners could implement right away to move the chains of their lives and our businesses out of the red zone and into the end zone? Yes. Now, key strategies that I'm sure you can imagine what I might say based on what we've already talked about and the overriding concept, focus. Follow one course until success. Schedule the night before. Schedule everything for tomorrow, the night before. And and I agree. I know what you're going to say. Oh, but things happen and I've got to adapt. And of course they do. They happen to all of us. But as best you can, to your best ability, schedule out what you know you need to do the next day and do it the night before. Number two, take your emotions out of the equation. Now, This last time that I told you about where I was in debt and everything was happening, of course, I shared my emotions about the dentist. I have no problem with that. (laughs) But but beyond that, if you go to Mommy Loves, when I had some issues with Mommy Loves, and and the reason I say debt is not an option to us is because um, Mommy Loves got into some debt trouble. And it was very difficult to get out of it because it was 2008. And if you remember 2008, oh, yes. uh, yeah, and it was, a, you know, I'd, I'd done some things long, very long story, but I'd done some things and we were, my husband and I thought about expanding the business right before all that happened. And I went and bought more inventory and invested into a whole new division of mommy loves. Then all of a sudden everything crashed. And, uh, I had this huge amount of debt that was just climbing because interest rates were going haywire. I mean, Mary Lou, one sure. of the interest rates was like almost 40%. Oh, so, and it just, climbed to that in the matter of a couple of months. So whatever debt I had now was compounding almost double. So it was, it was really scary. So, but with that, I had attached my own personal identity, my own emotions to that, thinking that I'm bad and I did something wrong and maybe I'm not really an entrepreneur and maybe I shouldn't do this. And all those things that we, we take with us, you know, that come from way back, (laughs) you have to really take your emotions out of that equation. And when you feel your stomach clench and you feel that pit in your stomach and the tension in your neck or wherever it is you feel that, that you are personally invested in this with your own emotions, just stop, take a deep breath and remember your business and your kids are not you. Mm, Business and your kids are not you. Brilliant. You know, and once you do that, then you will be able to think clearly and get yourself out of whatever it is you're facing or handle or take care of whatever it is you're facing. And so number one was schedule. Number two, take your emotions out of it. And I I would add the third one that really I think is very, very important. And that is do what you love. Do what lights you up. The old saying, you'll never work another day because if you're, if you just light up every time you think of whatever it is you're doing, it, it just adds an amazing dimension to your life and you find the energy and you find the drive and you find the money and you find, find whatever you need to, to have to, to do what you need to do. It's absolutely true. And I would say that it goes both ways. The money and the resources and the energy finds you because you have declared to the universe, this is who I am. This is what I do. All of a sudden stuff starts to show up. And that's what is so incredibly amazing. But until a person can get to that point and surrender all this other nonsense that we put in the way, that these blockades that we self-impose that keep us from living our true potential of moving forward despite the obstacles, despite the fears, despite anything else that we limit ourselves to doing. That's just the way the universe opens up. And I really appreciate you sharing those three. They're, they're fabulous. And as we come to a close today, Mary Catherine, what is the best way for people to connect with you online? parententrepreneursuccess.com, parententrepreneurpower.com. They all point to the same place. And Twitter, Parent ePower, and Facebook, Parent Entrepreneur Headquarters, Parent Entrepreneur HQ. But I also am going to offer a free gift to any of your audience members who find themselves being uh, parents and entrepreneurs and might need um, 
you know, maybe to connect those two and um, use the strategies and the skills that they've developed as a parent to use them to power up their business. And um, it basically is my newborn to exit strategy checklist um, to help you really focus on what skills you can transfer either one way or the other. So many parents uh, started out as entrepreneurs and they're using a lot of those skills in their parenting and then vice versa. So either one of those, you can use this to power up the other. And it can be found at parententrepreneursuccess.com slash position for I love that. your podcast. I am going to go grab that because that sounds fabulous. So thank you so much for, for sharing that with listeners. And listeners, you know that all of what Mary Catherine has shared today can be found over at the show notes page at maryloukaser.com forward slash Mary Catherine, and that's K-A-T-H-R-Y-N. And Mary Catherine, from one Mary second name <laughs> to another Mary second name. I love that. I'm Mary Lou and you're Mary Catherine. I want to thank you for your time, your wisdom, the stories that you shared today. This was by far one of the most in-depth conversations I've had with someone on player position and it's just been fantastic. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Mary Lou. It's been a blast. Hey team, thanks for joining me for another episode of the Play Your Position podcast, the place where stories matter and we make yours count. Make sure to subscribe to the show in iTunes if you haven't become a subscriber already so you never miss another episode. Question, are you on our email list? If not, you're missing out on your chance to win a $25 Amazon gift card every third Thursday of the month when we give one away to a lucky subscriber. Would your month be a little better with a $25 gift card to use on Amazon? Go now to MaryLouKaser.com forward slash subscribe to find out more. Again, that's MaryLouKaser.com forward slash subscribe. Thanks for listening to the Play Your Position podcast where your story matters and we make it count at MaryLouKaser.com.